principal residence. It's easy. Yes. It, say that again. What do you mean you created on a rollover? I don't know what you mean. You're not, you can't roll anything into a trust. I don't know what the rollover, I, I, honestly, I don't understand what you mean by a standard rollover. What are you, who's rolling what? You're, I know you're rolling something into a Canadian corporation. Who's doing the rolling? It's like a freeze, like a freeze, okay. So that, and the trust, the Canadian trust is the common shareholder, gotcha. There is no departure tax when someone leaves owning an interest in a personal trust. That's covered that, okay? So it's not deemed to have been disposed of. That's why I led into all of these other potential issues that might crop up that you don't see, okay? Um, principal residence. So let's start by saying that if you look at the formula that determines your principal residence exemption, you will see that if you are a non-resident, the years of non-residency don't count against the formula. Like, so the formula, most of us don't think of a formula. We just say if you've lived in a home all uh, for its entire period of ownership and you sell it, there's no gain. But that isn't what the Income Tax Act says. That is the result. But uh, you, you need to, in theory, designate the home as your principal residence in each year. Most of us don't file the, what is it, a T2091? There's a form. Most of us don't file that because the government says don't bother filing it if it was always a principal residence. I mean, I, I don't know how they know that unless you file a form, but that's another story. But the formula, there's a numerator that says one plus the number of years that the home is designated as a principal residence. The denominator is the number of years of ownership. You cannot, as a non-resident, designate years as a principal residence. So once you leave Canada, if you keep your house, you rent it out, for example, it ceases to be a principal residence when you leave Canada. It doesn't cease to be a principal residence, per se, the formula gets eroded. The formula which uh, exempts the gain gets eroded. <clears throat> so I talk here about starting to rent the house out after you become a non-resident. There's a deemed disposition on a change of use. In Canada, a lot of us have that deemed disposition on a change of use, and we defer it by electing to defer it because you can treat the home as your principal residence for four years while you're renting it out, and you can reduce your ultimate gain. But that doesn't do you any good if you're a non-resident because you, because you can't use those four years as principal residence years as a non-resident, even though the, even though section 45 says you can. But the other, but the, the formula doesn't allow you to do that. So you probably do not want to make that election. You want to have the deemed disposition when you leave Canada presuming that the property, your home, is worth more than its cost, because that gain is going to be exempt in any event. And then you'll file your return as a non-resident under Section 216 um, <clears throat> to avoid paying 25% withholding tax on the gross rent. Uh, Section 216, or 116 rather, will allow you to file a tax return in Canada based on net income. 